Well, hello everyone. It's great to be here. So MTP Connect was formed in 2015 out of the Department of Industry, Science, Energy and Resources Growth Centre Initiative. We're one of six growth centres and we're existing to promote the rate of growth of Australia's medical technologies, pharmaceutical, biotechnology and digital health sectors in Australia. And we work towards four separate outcomes and they are to increase collaboration and commercialisation across the sector, improve management and workforce skills, increase access to global supply chains and international markets, as well as optimising the regulatory environment. Now we do this in three ways. The first way is deploying strategic funding into the sector through our Commonwealth programs. We also act as an independent voice. We also take direct action through education programs and to further collaboration in the sector. And we work with our partners as well on programs to further commercialisation and collaboration. We also work with researchers and companies to ensure that they've got access to inter international markets and making connections overseas as well. MTP sector is Australia's eighth largest export segment, which supports 68,000 skilled jobs in the sector, and there's 1,300 companies in the MTP sector as well. Manufacturing exports are now worth $8.2 billion. $5.2 billion is added to the Australian economy through the MTP sector. Now, in 2019, we know that there were more than 1,800 clinical trials started in Australia, and based on the 2017 figure that we had for clinical trials, this contributed $1.1 billion to the economy. We've got 7,000 people employed in the clinical trial sector. Large pharma companies, um, medical device companies are running their clinical trials in Australia. So this is actually bringing in um, money into the economy from overseas and this service export, we sort of consider that as um, the fact that you've got this whole industry um, that is contributing to um, the economy as well. Now, we also need to acknowledge that the MTP sector has played a leading role in the fight against COVID by fast-tracking research into medical devices and vaccines. They've also played a key role in ensuring that we could secure vital medical supplies during the pandemic. We haven't been able to be involved in the COVID-19 clinical trials because we haven't um, had the disease burden here. We've still got an opportunity for us to run clinical trials in Australia where they've been shut down um, in other countries because they're dealing with the pandemic and have had to shift their um, workforce um, to be dealing with the pandemic as well as keeping their patients and staff safe. So I think that's really key for us to harness that opportunity um, to get more clinical trials into Australia, but we also need to be ensuring we've got the infrastructure to support that. So if we take a step back, we need to remember that Australia has a really strong and rich history in innovation and commercialisation. This particular slide shows um, some of the great successes with the companies of the likes of CSL, delivering key vaccines and protein-based therapies for bleeding disorders and a range of other disorders now. Certex Medical developed a cancer treatment that utilises radioactive microspheres to treat liver cancer. And then you've got the medical technologies companies, Cochlear, which is the world's leading cochlear implant company, and ResMed, that is a leader in treating sleep apnea. And then there's the Green Whistle, the development by Medical Developments International, which is the Penthrox inhaler. Then you've also got other companies that demonstrate you don't need to be big and you don't need to have products on the market to be successful. You can have success through being acquired or through attracting funding, and a number of these companies have done so. What we need to be doing is ensuring that we're keeping Australian innovation on shore for longer. At some stage, you're going to have to go into the big wide world and go offshore. From conversations that I've had with companies, they do want to be keeping their innovations in Australia. They want to be manufacturing in Australia, but they want to be looking global globally as well. So I think there's an appetite for keeping that onshore for longer. But certainly, even for companies that do need to go offshore, for marketing and what have you, that is still supporting Australian um, the Australian innovation system as well. Now, all of these successes are underpinned by Australia's sophisticated medical research environment. We've got an excellent research infrastructure and a world-class healthcare system to underpin that. 
So we've got a whole range of things that make Australia really key. We've got the R&D tax incentive as well, um, which is a benefit for companies who are coming to do research in Australia as well, being able to claim that. Medical research institutes as well to support the research um, makes all of that sort of makes Australia as a really popular um, and reasons why to come to Australia for clinical trials. I think the other thing is that we're got great skills and knowledge in early running early phase clinical trials as well. So running those complex clinical trials, um, we've, we've got a lot of expertise in that area. So that's something for Australia to harness. However, although Australia has a vibrant research sector supported by world-class infrastructure and facilities, our productivity for commercialisation does continue to decline. And in 2020, when we look at the Global Innovation Index, Australia ranked 23rd in this index. In 2018, we were 20th, so we have slipped a little bit in recent years. So we need to be ensuring that we're supporting the translation of excellent research that's coming out of our MRIs and universities and labs across the country. With this slide, I'll bring you to MTP Connect's priority outcomes that are, we're concentrating on to grow the sector in Australia. The first one is improving collaboration and commercialisation between researchers and industry, but also within industry to achieve stronger commercialisation outcomes. We're working to improve management and workforce skills. This is imperative to ensure that we've got the right skills necessary to grow the sector. We're also working to identify any policies or regulations that might be barriers to growth of the sector. And we're also working to improve the capacity for the sector to engage internationally to access markets and global supply chains. So having the right skills is key to supporting the work um, and ensuring that we've got the right outcomes across the sector. Now, what I have not touched on is the big news in the sector around the modern manufacturing strategy. Medical products is one of six national priorities under the modern manufacturing strategy. And with the federal government's focus on the modern manufacturing strategy, where their vision is for Australia to be recognised as a high quality and sustainable manufacturing nation. It's important that we remember that medical products are of value in this particular strategy. And this slide shows the smile curve of manufacturing from pre-production, production activities and post-production. You'll see that the high value added areas of the smile curve are in R&D at pre-production and then at the end post-production activities as well. A lot of our work in our sector is around this R&D part of the smile curve. So it's important to recognise the importance of this work in the economy. It contributes to high value jobs and will be very important as we recover from the COVID-19 pandemic as well. In terms of investment in R&D, you've got the government investment in through different programs and some of the programs that we run on behalf of the MRFF are government funded, but they certainly do attract investment from private sources as well. And some of the programs that we run do require matched funding. So you've got this mix of being able to leverage government funding to then attract more private investment as well. And that's key um, for growing the investment in R&D as well. And from that the work that we do through the BMTH and BTB programs is then working towards for them to be able to actually attract further investment um, from private capital as well or the other major programs that are out there as well. We've got great potential to increase commercialisation of the innovations across Australia. We've got great people, we've, they're skilled and we've got the infrastructure to support it. And we've certainly got the history to know that we have had great innovations coming out of Australia. For our scientific community, it's so important that we're taking these innovative ideas from the, from the bench to the bench side, to the bedside. And we look forward to seeing how Australia can contribute to commercialising more of the great innovations coming out of our research sector. Thank you.